Hey, hey, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, it is your girl, No Mercy, here. It's Tuesday night, so guess what? You already know what time it is. It's time for No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. Some of you may know who I am, but for those of you that don't, I am your host, Brooke Milbrook, formerly known in the fight business as Brooke No Mercy Deardorff. I am a retired professional boxer. I held the WBC lightweight title until I retired, and I was just inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame last year. Um, I have definitely been through some good, some bad, and of course, a lot of BS in the sport of women's boxing, but haven't we all? Welcome to my platform. This is where we talk the talk and we walk the walk. We will bring out the truth in women's boxing. You're going to hear from pioneers of the sport, past boxers, current boxers, we're even going to have some future boxers on. We're going to get down and dirty and speak the truth of what takes place in women's boxing and behind the scenes. You definitely don't want to miss one episode. We've got some great, great guests coming on. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share this out to everybody. We want everybody to know about the show. There's so much good information from all of the ladies that come on the show for the current future fighters. Um, so much to learn. So make sure you guys are sharing this out. On today's show, um, hopefully you guys already saw it posted, um, but if not, we've got Tracy Bird in the house. Tracy was one of the first to headline an all-women's boxing card with event entertainment promotions on pay-per-view. She was the first to appear as a boxing family with her brother, sister, herself, obviously, and her parents on USA Tuesday Night Fights. She was the first women's boxing champion from Flint, Michigan and first to have world champion uh, boxing brother work her corner for a world championship fight, which she won the WIBO junior welterweight world title. She was a three-time world champion, the former IFBA lightweight world champion, WIBO junior welterweight, and IWBF lightweight champ. She is one in the few who fought a lot of televised fights, inspiring a lot of other fighters out there. She fought three times on the USA Fight Night Friday Night Fights, three times as a main co-main event on pay-per-view. She was also one of my Boxing Hall of Fame sisters who was inducted into the Hall of Fame last year with me. Please welcome Tracy Bird to the show. Tracy, what's up, champ? What's going on, champ? How you doing? I am good. I am good. It's so good to see you again. It seems like forever ago already, but it wasn't that long ago that we were just at the inductions, but it's right. great to see you again. How have you been? Man, I've been doing well. Well, blessed. Uh, just having a good time living life full, to the fullest. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I know I'll be back there again this year. Are you going back? Yes, ma'am. I plan on uh, helping out and uh, uh, Sue gave me an assignment, actually a couple of assignments. So I'm excited about it to, um, to bring it back to Las Vegas again. Awesome. Awesome. Um, we've already got a few people in the house. What's up, Women's Boxing Channel? Thank you so much for tuning in. How are you? Um, so everybody um, probably already know who Tracy is, but we're going to learn all about her today, y'all. So um, take us back first a little bit. Tell us a little bit about, about your childhood um, and what it was like growing up in an all boxing family. Man, I, I'm going to start off with one of the famous jokes we have uh, that somebody dubbed in Flint. They said when the doorbell rang, the birds came out boxing. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much uh, how it was in our household. Uh, five, All five of my brothers boxed. Um, and then I came into the fold at the age of 32 and started boxing. Uh, just came from a very athletic family. My sister Lori played uh, basketball, just was like all world in basketball and played professional. And my sister Kay ran marathons and uh, just everybody did something. And of course, my parents were our coaches. So uh, if we could have had the dogs involved, they would have been running too. But yeah, they didn't do dog shows or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was very, very competitive. I mean, we all competed against one another in a fun way. Um, I remember uh, I, we used to live uh, 3295 Spring Valley Drive. Uh, that's where we grew up and lived. And and uh, pretty much in the summertime, we'd have to get up early in the morning. Everybody had to run four miles and before you ate breakfast. And then we went out and tilled the, tilled the garden in the back and everybody had chores to do. And uh, we were very close knit family, uh, primarily because it was eight siblings and then my parents and, and we grew up very poor. So um, 
we didn't go to a, we did well actually we probably didn't go to too many birthday parties and you know because we couldn't afford to bring gifts and do things and my mom didn't want to you know have four or five kids going to a birthday party because we were all uh, a year or two apart so uh so we learned how to uh love on one another care for one another the the, the older ones took care of the younger ones and and on down through the line. So it was just a very loving family. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, very similar to my, my mom's from a very big family. She had, there was eight of her brothers and sisters. Um, very, sim very similar. They didn't have much money. So, um, they didn't get much for like holidays and all that stuff. And, uh, but the very close, very, very close. Um, I was extremely close with my grandparents and all my cousins. Um, just because I think they're all so close that brings everybody together. Cause we were always together. Um, right. which is nice. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I, I'm pretty sure, um, from doing my research, which I pretty much knew most of it anyways, but from doing my research, your dad was a well-known trainer along with your mom who also trained, um, all your brothers, you just said boxed. Your sister was, um, really good with basketball. Um, but your dad did have an, a career too, right? Yeah. Yeah. My dad at one time was rated number 10 in the world. Um, yeah. He fought the likes of uh, Ernie Shavers, um, was in uh, Ali's uh, training camp as far as, you know, knowing him up north when he was in northern Michigan and and um, um, had an exhibition with Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, yeah, my dad was he, they called him the toy block. He was pretty much like me when it came to boxing. We were um, um, uh, pretty much contenders, if you will. I mean, you know, we went in to. To, to give a show and um, went into somebody's backyard and knowing we had to pretty much knock them out to win, but uh, put on a good show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so did you always want to box being from the boxing family background or how did you decide you wanted to, I mean, you started late, but did you always like feel like you wanted to try that at some point in time? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Cause uh, um, growing up, my brother, Ronnie, he was a little scrawny, 85, 90, 90 pounder. And um, he didn't have anyone to spar with. So my dad threw me in with him. So, you know, I'd spar with him at a young age and I always knew how to box uh, at the age of 16. My dad was trying to prove a point um, because women weren't in boxing and he wanted to throw me into the national, I mean, to the, uh, what was the, um, the local golden gloves that, that they had had it, uh, wanted to put me in. And um, I remember <laughs> him having a discussion with my mom and my mom was like, you know, no, we're not going to have her fight for you to prove a point. But I was ready. I was like, okay, put me in there. Yeah. Um, so I, I've always had a desire, always being around my siblings, you know, my brothers, um, just wanting to be around them. So yeah. uh, we all knew how to box in, in some way or another. And I keep, I tell people all the time, you know, you want to put me out in a street fight. S street fight is way different than boxing. Uh, I don't think I can win a street fight. Um, <laughs> but way but I, different. Yes, way different. You know, you can see with MMA. So, but um, but yeah, I've always um knew how to box. Just uh, the the competition level wasn't there for me as far as women in boxing. Yes, totally understand that. Um, Women's Boxing Channel chimes in said, "Ain't it funny? So many times we see certain working class zones like Flint producing recognized athletes." but like say Liverpool in UK. Well, there's a lot of um, phenomenal fighters out of Flint. And um, actually there, you know, there's a lot of really good fighters from places you wouldn't expect them to come from, but I think it's just the background that we all grew up in is kind of right. how it produces it. Um, yeah. But yeah, tons and tons of fighters from Flint. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, I mean, and I know later on we'll talk about it probably, you know, with the things that we're, we've been talking about, uh, uh, Andre Durrell, of course, my brother, Clarissa, that's yeah. my, that's the goat and she's yeah. my goat. You know, um, there's a lot of, a lot of people that came along, especially, um, the ones that, um, came out of Burston Fieldhouse, uh, Flint Pal. I mean, th there's a plethora of boxers that came from these gyms and, and yeah. boxing was just our way of life. It kept us off the street. It kept us engaged along with yeah. basketball and other sports that they had in the city of Flint. Yeah. You just kind of got to do something to just keep your, keep your focus and keep you off the streets. I mean, that's kind of like not, I shouldn't say everybody's kind of thought process, but I know a lot of people that was their thought process. Well, if I can just stay busy doing something that I love, it'll keep me away from trouble, you know, because right. trouble, right. a lot of the areas are troubled areas. So that's kind of the best thing to do is keep yourself focused and busy doing something. So you're not running the streets. 
right. doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I do know though, um, just like me, um, I had basketball scholarships and all that stuff. And then I joined this military and I didn't take that path. Um, but yeah. I know your first love was basketball too. You and your sister, Lori played ball. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your basketball career before boxing? Oh man. Uh, the gyms were always open. We were on a podcast the other, um, about a month ago, my sister, Lori and I, and, um, uh, Chris, my brother Patrick, and that's what we were talking about. Uh, the gyms of Flint, Michigan were always open back in the day. And we played ball uh, pretty much. I was, I'm four years younger than my sister Lori, so I kind of tagged along. And there were a lot of girls that were a lot better than me um, and younger than me. Um, but I was just happy to be there. Uh, I thought I'd get a, a scholarship in, in track because I loved uh, distance running. And then just kind of grew out of it. And my, my parents pretty much said, Hey, we don't, we're, you know, we're poor. We don't have any money to send you to college. If you want to go, you better go on an athletic or academic scholarship. And mm -hmm. I was, I was pretty smart in high school, but um, uh, not to the point where I was going to receive, you know, scholarships for academics. And so I started honing in on my basketball skills and got a scholarship to Grand Valley State University and best four years of my life, um, best years of my life, even even today, because the majority of my friends uh, are from Grand Valley, um, a lot of my closest friends. So played four years at Grand Valley, still hold the single assist record there. I was just a little yes. point guard and, and loved to pass the ball. So, yeah, that's awesome. how I was. Yeah. 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 I Sometimes I think back and I'm like, man, I should have played. But, you know, because I had that scholarship and, you know, young, I was just like, mm, I want one year off. Like, I just want one year. And then I followed somebody that was going to the service. And I mean, not that it was a good experience and it definitely helped me grow up. But looking back, I'm like, I wish I would have stayed with basketball. But I did meet my husband in the service because he also yeah, served. And that's how we met. So it wouldn't have had the same life. So you know everything happens for a reason so yes ma'am and then i then i found boxing so i mean it, it all worked out at least i mean i did i'm always doing something like i always had to do something athletic like i had to keep doing so it, but i found boxing so it all yeah. worked out it all worked out yes um, yes you did start your professional boxing career in 1996 um you immediately got a ton of attention uh, by appearing on the same cards as your well-known brother which most people probably know chris bird um, he fought from 93 to 2009, was a two-time heavyweight world champion, um, beating Vitaly Klitschko for the WBO title in 2000 and mm -hmm. won the IBF heavyweight title, defending, defeating Evander Holyfield in 2002. Um, did you enjoy fighting on the same cards? Obviously, since you guys are so close and you've already explained that you did. Um, and then how was it the experience with such a fast paced media attention? Was that like a lot to take in? Man, it, it, it was crazy, uh, only because I, when I started boxing, I was 32 years old. My, my dad put me in with my brother, Patrick. He's, uh, I think Patrick's about four, yeah, four years younger than me and about the same weight. Um, and he pretty much told him to just, you know, whoop my tail and see if this is for you. And and I'm crying and snotting and, and you know, <laughs> just fighting. And, and uh, when it was all said, well, done, you know, my dad was like, oh, oh, oh OK, you can you can box. And that it, it was just a whirlwind from there because they had just came from the Olympics, 92 Olympics. Um, they were, you know, propelled and stuff. People were really chasing Chris. Uh, and it was just a whirlwind. And when they started Tuesday night fights, it was like, hey, put her on. And I was kind of like the four round opener. And yeah. my first three, four fights were on Tuesday night fights. And it was crazy. I mean, it, you know, the attention because um, it, it, it to me. And I don't know if we're going to talk about it maybe a little later, but, you know, every, everyone knows if people in boxing knows Christy Martin, DJ Gorgity fight set the tone, um, yes. brought back, brought back the dead, you know, the, the, yes. what, the fighters that were in the 70s, 60s and 70s and brought it back to life. And yes. that was my, um, that was my thing. When I saw them, I told my dad, I can, I can do this. Um, yeah, I can do that. If they can do it, I can do it. There it is. So when it when it put me in the limelight with Tuesday Night Fights, then it brought out uh, Jackie Callen saw me and, you know, um, um, uh, event entertainment. And, and that's what uh, kicked off my career, because at the time it was so cool because Dave Sage, God rest his soul. He was a promoter for Chris um, at the time and getting the Tuesday Night Fights and different stuff. And and I didn't get locked into a, a management contract. And I'm sure we'll probably talk about that later. The the 
the mess of boxing. Yeah. Right? But mm -hmm. he didn't lock me into a contract. He just said, hey, you do what you need to do and we, we'll support you. And um, that was just that that was the support just of the whole city. And because of my brother, Chris, and because of his fame, I was able to just grab onto his coattail and, and ride it out. Yeah. Which, I mean, is phenomenal. And you're not the only one that's ever done that. I mean, um, Layla Ali immediately um, because of her dad, um, you know, but I think everyone I, I think for and Jackie Frazier, but I think there's so many. Um, but everybody proved their own, like they took their own name. I feel by the end of their career, um, cause you know, a lot of people probably at first are, are thinking, oh, well, you know, they're just, they're just in there because of who they're related to or the name, the name right. quote. Um, but I, everyone uh, that I can think of, all the females that took after somebody, um, I feel like made their own name. They paved their own way mm -hmm. and they proved that they, that they needed to be in there, that it wasn't just, they were doing it just because. Um, right, right. So, but yeah, um, not the only one to come up like quickly, but yeah, it was perfect timing, I think for you yeah. to, to hop on in there. Um, yeah. But yeah, you definitely took off right away, but sometimes that's good, especially starting at 32, you kind of wanted to <laughs> A faster paced career. Yeah, I didn't have time. I didn't have time. <laughs> I didn't have time to fight amateur. Okay. It was like really. Uh so right. So yeah. Yeah, just jump, just throw me in there. Uh throw me into the wolves. Let's do this. Let's see what we can do. Um yeah. on um August 2nd, 1997, you did win a convincing but very tough 10 round decision over unbeaten Canadian Nora Daigle, who was three and O against some very experienced fighters, and she had knocked all out, out all of her opponents. Um, but with your aggression, boxing fundam fundamentals, you were able to keep the fight under control and you took home the IFBA lightweight world title. Um, tell us about the fight and how it felt to win your first world title. Man, it was it was crazy. Uh, I remember uh, being at Southwestern High School. Um, anybody that's tuned in from Flint, they know that there's a derby track thing that leads down the back of Southwest High School and you run the hills. And I remember my dad just shouting in my ear every every time we were there, you know, this is for a world title. This is for a world title. You're going to be the first in Flint to win a world title. You can do this, you know. And just the preparation, it was literally, literally like Rocky, like the movie yeah. Rocky. I mean, I can running, it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it was just, it was so... Man, it was just a great experience. Um, I remember my brother Chris saying, man, I should have been there because I think something was going on as far as with boxing on his end and he couldn't make the fight. And it was on pay-per-view and, and they were tuning in and I got knocked down. I don't know if you know it. I got knocked down in, I want to say maybe the fifth, sixth round. And um, it was like a flash knockdown, but yeah. I, I felt it. And, yeah. and when I got up, it was like, wake up, like, girl, you better bring this home and uh, just put it on her. I mean, it was it was a really, really great fight on both ends. And um, and yeah, it was my, my first title. And uh, yeah, I don't think I read about the knockdown. I read a lot of articles on it and I don't know that yeah. I read about the knockdown, but I just read how close of and like awesome fight it was like very, yeah, it was. very good competitive fight. Yes, Which is good. yes. And that's so good yes. for box for women's boxing when you get those fights. Yes. Um, she was one, she was one when I when I when I fought, I think I want to want to say it was maybe um uh at 130, which is really hard for me to hold um around that weight. And I was glad I went up uh from junior lightweight to lightweight uh, to 135. It was a lot better for me, a lot comfortable for me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, easier to make weight and uh, maintain, not be so dehydrated. I did that right. one time I went down, I was fighting it because I fought from one to featherweight 126 all the way to lightweight 135. And mm -hmm. one fight, I got called for a world title fight at 122. And I'm like, it's only four pounds. Yeah. <laughs> that was the hardest thing I ever did in my entire life. I didn't have four pounds to lose, right. but I'm like, it's only four pounds. Like that'll be super easy. No, it was like all the way up till the day of weigh-ins. Like I was still cutting weight because I didn't yes. think I was going to make weight. And yeah. I only had to lose four pounds, yeah. um, but I was so dehydrated and like, I was not myself. So I would never do that ever again. Like I was like, nope, don't even call me. Right. <laughs> well, wait, right. No, thanks. No, bye. I can't. <laughs> I'll go up yeah. and wait, but I can't go down anymore. Like that's not yeah. happening. Yeah. Uh, um, people don't realize like, and it, it like, and I get so when I see people like walk around at like 180, 190 and they go down and fight at like 168 or 154, I'm like, how? 
and why? People, yeah. Like people don't, yeah, people don't understand that. Like you say, the cut. There's not no fat, no nothing, no water left no. to cut. And no. uh, it's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's why. I mean, after I did that that one time, the rest of my career, I'm like, I will fight at what I walk around at, and up. Period. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not losing. I'm not putting my body through that ever again. Like never. Um, it's not easy. Um, and plus, like back then, I didn't have like I didn't have a manager and a promoter, and like it was just me and my husband. Like, I didn't have all that extra stuff. I didn't have a nutritionist. I didn't. Have, right. I didn't have. Right. I work right. out today. I work. I work. <laughs> you know, probably the same as like I didn't have all that luxury, so it wasn't easy. Like I didn't have like okay, well you eat this, this, and this, you'll lose a pound or two. Like, right. no, I mean, it yes. was, I mean, I dieted, but the best, you know, that's about as far as you could do. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, not for me. Um, but yes, you were the very first woman in Flint, Michigan to win a world title. Um, tell us how special that moment was for you. And did, um, did, did Flint do anything special for you or did they have like any kind of ceremony or like party or anything? Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, you know, when um, I, I started to Google and I was talking to my brother Chris last night and I'm like, was I the first woman or was I the first person? You might have been the very first person, actually, now yeah, that you say that. Exactly. Because we, we, we started researching it and I didn't see anyone else that had won a title from Flint before me. And the thing about it, when I started looking at some of the articles, as we started talking about it and they didn't even acknowledge me as winning, they meaning the media, when I started Googling, didn't even acknowledge me as far as winning a world title out of Flint. Um, and then they put, well, yeah, because maybe, and even Chris won the title after you. Yep. He came after I won in 97. Chris won in 2000. 2000 and 2002. Uh, yeah. Yep. And uh, Andre Durrell won in 2014. And then the GOAT came along, uh, Clarissa, and I think hers 20, was 2017, 20, 2018. Or 18 or something. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah, I think actually you probably are the very first one, male or female. Correct. I, and I believe they didn't so. even acknowledge that for you, though. They did a huge thing for Clarissa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, um, and no, and I, not, not Flint. I, don't get me wrong. No, Flint, Flint did me well. But I'm talking okay. about as far as the, the media when I Googled to see the gotcha. information. You didn't see anything on it? Correct. It wasn't anything the there. The only that place it I saw it on was W Van. Yeah. See that see that's that that's our that's our site. That's yeah, our site that's, for women. I mean, that's the only place women that I saw that. Yep. No all for women. And you I mean I did a lot of, I do a lot of research because I like try to get like the nitty gritty, everything I could like, you know, everything I can find out there to ask and then try to draw right. out other stuff so people really get to know you. Um, sure, sure. Whole, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that was the only place I saw that WBAN. Yeah. Anybody listening, WBAN.com. If you want to know anything about women's boxing or any boxer, that's the site to go to. It's the most accurate. Um, uh, women's boxing I, I, channel. Uh, okay. Like yeah. I, I was looking at one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the comments there on the, on the question. Go ahead. And, yeah. You know, you know what? Um, I, first I'm going to, I'm going to hit on just right quick Flint. Love my city. Uh, yes. love my city. And they Flint did. They, yes. Yes. And gave me a plaque honored from, from the state, uh, the congression, um, all the way to the city acknowledged me, gave me plaques. Um, and, um, you know, just, just did, a a, a great celebration for me. And I, I really appreciate my city. Um, and then, but I just want to touch on right quick, just, just side note on Laura Serrano two times and, uh, McCarter three times. And th this is so crazy because when I fought Laura Serrano the first time, um, I had the belt. Um, I thought I won, um, she, she obviously, you know, they, they gave a decision. I thought it could have went either way. And you know, we as boxers, you know, when you won or lost, you know, yeah. you know, when it's close and it's like, uh, yeah. I remember my dad whispering in my ear and he said, but you have the title. So it should, you know, the points, whatever. Should they typically sway towards the title holder. If exactly. It's close. Yeah. And that's cool. This is the thing when it comes to boxing, I just want to address this. And I told this to uh, Layla, Layla, dear, good friend, fought her three times and it's crazy. It was <laughs> split decision, unanimous draw. You know, the fights yeah. could have went either way. And we both have said that. My thing when it came to boxing was, I used to always tell these ladies, don't leave your day job. We made nothing in boxing. The only person that made money that I can say that I can attest to that was compared to men was Layla Ali and Christy Martin. Yep. Everybody else get in line with me. My highest yeah. purse was $10,000. 
My, my highest my, curse was four. See, and, and my, 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 WP. my, and, and see, and that's a title fight, 10 round yep. title fight in Mexico. My, my, my minimum in my contract was always my maximum, you know, and I know we kind of jumping around, but when no, it it's okay, to, we can still, it, we can touch on it more. That's fine. They're yeah. asking questions. Um, yeah. but yes. And I think I'm actually glad that you said that because out of all the people that I've had on here, aside from myself. You're the only ones that's ever said what their highest purse was. Nobody else mm, wants to say right. that. And I said, that's the point of this show. We're retired. Who cares? Yes. Yes. Who yes, cares? yes. Um, yeah. But I feel like people need to understand that we all did it because we love the sport of boxing and to grow the sport of boxing. It wasn't for a paycheck. Um, right. yes. I worked a full time. I mean, all of us worked full time jobs. Most of us were mothers. We trained a couple hours like there was no time. Um, and busted our ass. And then like when I went to Mexico and I fought Mia St. John the second time to defend her title because she wanted the rematch, it had to be in Mexico. I was like, no problem. I had to go there a week early because you had to do the public. I mean, it's huge in Mexico when you box. I don't know. If, did you box in Mexico? I don't know. No, um, no, I never. No. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, boxing over there, it's insane. Like I felt like a freaking main actor TV celebrity when I went to Mexico. That's like, and I was the opponent, like, but I couldn't go anywhere without autographs, pictures. Like it was insane. Um, mm. And I, you know, I was just coming in opponent to fight Mia St. John, but um, I'd already fought her once. So people probably already knew, you know, that was a big rematch thing, but right. I had to take off work for like 10 days for that fight to go for the you know, the pre-fight workout, the public workout, the interviews, you know, and by the time, and I made $4,000 for a WBC title. Wow. And I was just like, think about it really. I mean, I actually lost money because I took off work. So I lost all that time off work. I mean, so people just don't really fathom, I guess. Yeah. We didn't make any money. Like literally half the time we spent money yes. to do it. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm glad that you said that just because it makes me feel a little better, like a little weight off my chest that I'm not the only person <laughs> out there that's ever said that. Um, yeah. But I feel like people should know. I mean, and girls even today, no, they're still not making equal, but yeah. some of, and in some of them, and not all, some of them are still making the same pay we were making back in the day, but there's wow. a select few that are making money and, and it's yes. growing. So yes, yes, we are making a little bit of yeah. revealing yeah. answers here. Yeah, we are revealing answers on the Women Boxing Channel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't have nothing to hide. I, no, I mean, that's so why I said I'm, I'm retired. Good. I could give two S's what people, I mean, I don't <laughs> care. That's the point of this show. <laughs> so people Save the um, <laughs> People can learn. Everybody's stories are so different and we all have a story to tell. We all yes. have information that fighters can use that they can learn from um, yes. and take it in. Like, I feel yes. like that's what these new fighters need to like, listen to some of these stories. Like they're right. such good stories. Yes. Um, but okay. Back on point, back on point. And so <laughs> women's boxing channel, he will be, um, they'll be asking lots of questions. See, pop up, there's another one. <laughs> Jane couch. <laughs> uh, wow. 4k for a world title. Jane couch went to USA, slept on the staircase the night before her world title and got paid nothing madness. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't surprise me. Does not surprise me one bit. Um, and I had to fight for that 4k. I was like, absolutely not going for anything less and that. And I shouldn't have went that low. Um, yeah. but if you wanted to fight, I mean, you really didn't have a choice. I mean, they're like, Hey, um, 2k, um, to fight so-and-so for WBC world title. Yeah. Take it or leave it. I mean, there was yeah. really no negotiating back then. Yeah. It was either you yeah. want it or you don't, period. We'll yeah. call someone else. Correct. Um, that's just how it was. Um, right. So on November 13, 1998, you did win your second world title um, for the IWBF lightweight title. You won this fight with your stick and move style and you frustrated mm -hmm. your opponent. Um, did you Do you feel like that fight was pretty easy for you? Yeah, and it's it's something that that you you, you would uh, ask that only because um, I'll never forget my brother saying it looked like a sparring session. Okay, that's that's how easy it was. Yeah, um, nothing against Kareem, a great fighter, and all of that. I, and I went to her, went to Minnesota to fight her. Um, however, it it was just 
you, I mean, it, it was easy. It was an easy fight. Yeah. Um, and, and it's crazy. And I don't know, it just as far as behind the scenes and people, I, I think there's a difference with women and men, than men, maybe, I don't know, but we hung out afterwards, you know, it was like, yeah. Hey, you know, before the fight, yeah, it's a stare down. I can't stand you. I'm about, I'm about to knock you out. But afterwards it's like, girl, what you doing? How's the family? Yeah. What's going on? You know? Um, yeah. but yeah, it, it really, in many interviews. <laughs> Yeah. And, but to me, it was, it was, it, th that was probably one of my, my, my easier fights. Um, and primarily because of my style, she was more of a follower, you know, um, I, yeah, jab moved, you know, um, yeah. did my, 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 my Pernell Whitaker, which was my boy and God rest his soul. But that, oh, you know, yes, I met Pernell. He is amazing. He was at one of my too. fights. Um, I yeah. think the one when I fought Mary McGee, actually, I think is the one I met him at and he started, it was, and I know it was because he started so much mess at the weigh-in. He was, oh, messing wow. he was like in my ear, like sis, they do, they're doing this, 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 this. And then he would go over there and say, then she's doing this, this, this. And I was like, <laughs> you better stop it. You better yeah. stop it. You're starting yeah. drama. Stop it. I tell you two guys, I, I give kudos to in boxing, boxing other than my, you know, my, my brothers, my family is, and Chris will tell you in, the, in a minute, I love me some sweet pea and I love me some Jesse James Leha to this day. Yes. I, I, those two. Yeah. I just, I, sweet, I, I yeah. I mean, you, Sweet Pea's style, it was undeniable. I mean, his style yeah. was undeniable. Um, yeah. So awesome to watch. Um, yeah. yeah. God rest his soul. Yeah. But it, amazing, amazing person. I mean, hilarious. Yes. He was so funny. It was <laughs> so great meeting him. Um, yeah. Amazing person. Um, so let's see. Um, then after that, you did have a two-year layoff. And then mm. um, on May 19th, 2001, you defeated Brenda Vickers easily to take the vacant IFBA Intercontinental Junior Lightweight title. Um, do you feel, did you feel like you had any ring rust from the layoff? And then like, was it a choice of a layoff or you just couldn't get fights? I know people always asked when I had, I didn't have that long of a layoff, but I had layoffs sometimes just because I couldn't get fights because um, mm -hmm. I didn't have the promotions and the management. But people always would say, well, you know, ring rust, you're going to have ring rust. And I never really felt ring rust because I always stayed active. Um, yeah. but do you feel like you had ring rust or did it affect you at all? No, no, it didn't affect me at all. Um, and to everything you said, uh, staying active, you know, my, my dad's gym was always open. I mean, we, that's all we knew was boxing, you know, it was like go to the gym, work out, play some ball, uh, stay in shape. Um, so, and always sparring and, and staying with it. And, and, and two, to, um, just piggyback off where, what you were saying too, it had to do with management. So um, that my separation from event entertainment. And so um, that was another reason why, you know, I was, I was off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I never, I never felt any ring rust just because I guess like, like same with you, I always stayed active. So, I mean, I, I was constantly sparring and doing the same things I would be doing in a fight. So yeah. I didn't ever yep. feel any ring rust. I'm sure some people do if they just stop boxing altogether and then try to come back. But if you stay active, I don't feel like there's any ring rust. Correct. Angie, what's up, girl? Um, Angie was um, Angie that said, hey, ladies, great interview. Um, she was one of the ones that was helping out Sue at the inductions. Um, one of the amateur fighters, tall, blonde. OK, OK. She was at, I think she was at the front door. If I remember, Angie, were you working the front door? If I remember, no, right? I talked to her for a minute because I was like, hey, okay. what was y'all at the table when we came early? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's Angie. Yes. Um, she, she watches every show. She's like, she's, oh, she, nice. oh, and then she'll text me after and say, oh my God, like, I didn't know that. And I'm like, yeah, that's what this is for. Like for you guys to learn. <laughs> she said, I met her. I don't know if she, she remembers you. She just said she remembered you. <laughs> Girl, you're special. You stick out like a thumb, like a sore thumb. Um, so uh, then uh, March 22nd, 2003, Mandalay Bay Casino in Las mm. Vegas. You did mm. come off the canvas in the second round to win a 10 round split decision over yes. undefeated. I don't know how to say her first name, but Rillick. And of Poland. In, in Rillick. Yeah, of Poland. In <laughs> for the WIBO super lightweight title. Um, yeah. You did take that fight, though, on one week's notice, and you did hand her her very first loss coming off the canvas. How special and how did that feel? Man, it's so crazy because my sister Lori, my sister-in-law, uh, Tracy and them, they were up in the nosebleed somewhere because, you know, we we could, it wasn't like up close, up front tickets. And they said that, uh, I got two stories to tell on this because I got to give kudos to a couple of people. But they said when they went to sit down, 
<laughs> I was on the I was on the canvas. Oh no. <laughs> I, I, that was the that was the second time that I that I had actually saw my cousins the Tweety Birds when uh when I had failed because <laughs> the birds People, was, the Tweety Birds are real I'm telling you 100 percent I have seen them one oh. time one time I have seen them they are real <laughs> they really what you can feel. <laughs> And so, but but with that fight, uh, the girl, and I got to give some shout outs because Layla McCarter, uh, really good friends, um, they asked her to fight and um, she had management, different things. I was, you know, I was at home. I was a school police officer trying to do my thing. And she called me and said, hey, Tracy, I'm not going to take this fight, but do you want it? And I was like, sure, you know, I'll take it. Uh, I'm always ready. And so um, uh, uh, with that fight, Doc Brodus. Doc Brodus was the coach for George Foreman. And you're going to see it in the uh, movie that's coming out. Doc Brodus was, uh, when we moved to Las Vegas, Chris and I, my dad sent us over to Nevada Partners. Uh, Doc Brodus was over there training and my dad said, hey, he's going to take care of you. And he did. And he said, baby, you're going to be my first world champion. I, I never had a female world champion because For Foreman was his world champion, um, male. But he said, you're going to be my first female world champion. The thing was, Doc Brodus was probably almost... 90 years old at the time. I mean, he walked up the stairs and he said, baby, knock her out. Cause I don't want to have to walk up this stairs again. <laughs> that was round one. You right. <laughs> we went 10 rounds. You went 10 I, rounds. I don't think Doc sorry, Brodus went, sorry. After four, after the fourth round, I don't think Doc Brodus went back up the stairs. But with that being said, it was a great fight. I'm, I, I fight better against Southpaws for some reason. I think because I'm ambidextrous. And um, uh, Angelista was a, a Southpaw. And so um, my brother being in the corner, we had no inswell. You know how you, when you, when you yeah. swell up, you got yeah. the inswell yeah. pushing the yeah. blood out. This mug had some little chips, some uh, ice chips. Ice chips. And, and what, what, what had happened was her, she had on, and, and, and we probably could get in this later as far as what women wore when it came to boxing. But she had on some beads on her sports bra. Okay. And when I'd go down, the beads were cutting my yeah. face. Okay. It was because I was rubbing up against them. Yeah, you're and, rubbing up on them. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it was cutting my face. So I go back to the corner. I'm telling my brother, I said, man, I'm swelling up. I said, her beads are cutting my face. So he was giving these little ice chips. And, you know, Chris Chris was sweating more than me. He up in the corner shadow boxing. And, and, <laughs> and it was crazy. But the thing about it was, that was the best moment of brother sister corner with a world champion coach and doc brodus the best corner i could have ever had and um he my, chris is um just a uh um a, he has a phd in boxing as far as studying the sport and he just straight up said she only thing she got is her left hand she loads up on it he said go in and smother her left hand which is not common you don't go into somebody's left hand no. you don't go toward danger but because she had to widen it out to hit me, I was shortening it up and she couldn't throw yeah. it. Right. And after she wasn't that, getting full force. It was like half a punch. That's right. So after yeah. I think it was the fourth round or so, she knocked me down. I beat her tail for the next six rounds. I mean, whooped. I, I don't even know how it became a split. Seriously. If you look at the fight, we, we, we watched it a couple months ago, me and my brother. And, and it was just a boxing clinic. And, yeah. um, but I thank God. I, th I thank God for her. He, they, she, they, her camp. This is how crazy this is. She was like twenty-one and one, and you know where that one loss came from. They called me at the age of like fifty-two, and said, "Do you want to come out of retirement to to so she could avenge her one loss?" I was like, right? Yeah. Are you gonna pay me a million dollars? Right. I mean, what are you that. paying? I mean, if you're paying good, that right there. I one hundred percent would. If you, yeah. how much? How long well, do I have to train? Okay. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't call me back. So it was all good. So she got that. I can always that say. One mark. <laughs> that one so, mark. Yeah, it, it was a great fight. She's a great boxer. She went on to do great things um, after that. Never lost again. Um, so, um, but that's, that's the kind of boxing I did. I know when somebody had put in the comment about the 11 and one and then fighting everybody, I fought any and everybody that came across yes. and whether, whether it was a title at, at six and oh, or, uh, for a world title at 12 and, and 10, whatever. Um, I came in to spoil a show and to let people know when you said it done, 
um, you either gonna boo because they robbed me or you gonna cheer because I won. Right. Fact. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, women's boxing channel, we will talk about that a little bit later, I'm pretty sure. But he was said he didn't realize you were a police officer. That in mind, what do you think about Tierra Brown? I think she needs a break. She's 14 and 0 with 10 KOs and can't get a decent promoter. Yeah. She has no promoter or manager. That's the problem. I'm, I'm going to have to look her up because uh, my brother's going to be doing some great things coming up and uh, prayerfully we can get some people signed and, and do some things with some women fighters and and uh, and let them know that we're here for them because that's yeah. uh, that, that's a problem with boxing. Boxing, I, I can't even get into the promoters and, and, and the commentators and how they've killed boxing. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I agree 100%. And I wish... Um, you know, as my, since my coach was my trainer towards the end of my career, I mean, I worked with Sam Colonna or I worked with Jesse Torres first. He was a fighter um, when I was amateur and then he didn't really do pros. So then I went to Sam Colonna, Windy City Gym, um, great promoter, promotes or trainer, trains lots, 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 lots of the world champions. Um, but then there was some fights that I wanted to take and he's like, no, nah, let's go this way. And just the, and then it was an hour and a half drive to the gym. So then my husband got his license coach's license. And I just started working with him because I was training with him all work all week and driving to the gym one day a week for sparring. Mm. So I was like, why am I, I'm going to keep paying a percentage of my purse for, for sparring one day a week. Right. It didn't make sense. Um, but yeah, he, for years we've talked, I, we would love to like open our own gym or do promoting or, but I just don't, I don't have the connections right. is the problem. And the funding, like you have, there's so much that people, people don't realize goes into that. You can't just be like, cause people ask me that all the time. Why don't you train fighters? Why don't you, um, manage fighters? Why don't, well, first of all, one, you got to have money Two, You got to know people. Um, you got to have connections. You got to, you know, you got to, there's a whole lot more that goes into, yes. I would love to work with female fighters. I would love it. Right. Um, yeah. but you got to have the the access to the stuff that you need to do that and the connections or like, like you said, like you work with your brother, like, and you guys like come together. I don't have that connection, I guess, per se. And especially like in the area that I was or here, it's just not, there's not, I don't know that many people that would be interested in like going in with us for something like that. So, right. I mean, I do work with people if they ask or whatever, I'll work with them and, we'll do lessons or whatever, but yeah, but yeah, I think that's amazing. Um, we need more people working with the females for sure. Yeah. Um, so your brother, Chris, the heavyweight world champ was in, Oh, we already talked about that. He was in the corner for that fight. We just talked about that. So yeah. I don't need to ask that. see, sometimes we jump around and then I have to <laughs> like my mind straight cause I get it all in order. Um, <laughs> Uh, June 28th, 2003, you faced mm. Belinda Lara Quente, a very known fighter, obviously, like everybody probably knows. Um, you suffered a loss to her, but after the fight, you did state, someone called the cops, I just got robbed. Um, tell us about the fight, because I know I've definitely been robbed in fights. I never made like a public statement um, about it, just because every time I would say something, people would be like, oh, you're just a sore loser, or you're making excuses, or you're doing this or this. So I never um, said it until after retirement. Um, and I've talked about a couple of my fights on the shows, and I'll continue to talk about the fights, but I've talked about some stuff. I don't know if you watched any of those. You said you watched some of them, but mm -hmm. um, I have talked about some of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and, but how, tell us about that fight, and obviously, you knew, like you said, we know, like a hundred percent, we know if, if we won or lost, um, that it was a clear robbery. So tell us a little bit about that one. Man, we, we, we flew down to Florida <laughs> and I'm chuckling because that right there tells you the fight. Yeah. We flew down to Florida, her hometown, yeah. her backyard, her promoters, and it was all good. You know, I don't go anywhere. I don't, I, yeah. I don't care. You know, um, however, um, it's believed and she could come on and probably testify to it. I don't know if it was true because I, I didn't go to the hospital with her, but I broke her eardrum, beat the snot. I beat the snot out that girl. And I the crowd booed. That's how bad it was. 
Yeah. And I'm like, you, I don't trip because my money is not in boxing. Uh, right. That's my political change as coming to America would say. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, exactly. um, I had a full time job. Yeah. But when you work hard, you train hard and you hope to get a fair outcome. Now, we all know, you know, you're going into somebody's backyard. You Come on, you it's their promotion. You you know, you you got a lot stacked against you. And that's yeah. cool because you're going to show your skills. Yeah. That was one of those where I'm like you. I normally don't say, hey, you know, no, nah, that that was they should they should have called the FBI, the CIA, brought in SWAT because, yeah. Somebody took my fight. <laughs> and that was the only time I'd say, come on. Well, it's a couple of them. But that was the main one that it was like, you got to be. What was y'all watching? Right. So, so yeah. So that, that kind of reminds me of, did you watch? I don't know if you saw it on my Facebook, but there's a fight not that long ago. Chevelle, Chevelle Hallback fought Sonia Drilling, who was supposed to be my very first episode. I don't know if you watched that episode, but if you did, you were probably cracking up laughing. If you watched my first episode where she didn't show up. Um, I was so, like, literally I was sitting in the green room, like waiting to go, like I was supposed to already be live. And I was like, uh, well, what? And it was my first show. So, you know, I was like nervous already. Right. And I'm like, well, what the fuck am I, what am I going to do now? And then I read the email and I was like, send me in, like, send me in yeah. right now. <laughs> right, right. But right. did you watch that fight? No, I didn't. I didn't watch Chevelle's fight. She sent. Well, I, I take it back. I'm sorry. She, I didn't watch it live or anything like that. She sent me the reel. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Similar to that robbery, or probably way worse than that one. Similar. Okay. Similar. Yeah. It was. It was. It. it you know. It, um. I just. You know. It's like, come on, y'all. Come right. on. And some of these some of these judges, you almost wonder, did they ever box before? Because I right. know like what, I know, is, what the I know, hell are you looking at? Yes, I know judges that have literally never boxed, just was a part of it. You know, family, whatever, did it and just Which wanted fine to if you know what you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, because you're absolutely right. Every every uh ref, uh judge does not have to actually have fought before. No. But still, no. you come on now. Come on. Right. Be able, like what? Be able, Chevelle put a whipping on that girl. So it was just, it was almost comical because the girl couldn't yes. hit her. She couldn't hit Literally, her. Literally, I was like recording part of it because I was going to send it to her, which I knew she could watch it on the thing anyway, probably. But I mean, I bought it. So I was like, I was, and then I literally deleted I mean, when they called out the decision, I like threw my phone. I was like, so yeah. I was like, and the commentators, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, yeah. what? I mean, yeah, even the com yeah. everybody, the commentators, everybody. Um, but I was so mad for that one because I know how hard Chevelle works and I know what she puts into boxing and it takes her so long to get fights yes. and then to get one and get robbed yes. like that. Yes. I, I hurt. Like I was half in tears. I was so upset and like pissed for her all at the same time. Um, and I know she was fighting that with the commission. I need to text her because she, I haven't heard from her. I need to call her. And find out if she ever heard back from them or if they yeah. just blew her off. But they were supposed yeah. to be reviewing it yeah. um, last time she spoke with them. So I need to find that out, right. actually, now that we brought that up and we were talking about it. And, and I wonder, what do they do with that? Do they reverse it? Do they, I mean, what they do they will. do? They oh, will. Okay. Okay. Um, she contested the decision, which I have done before. And I mm. they just blew me off. They never oh. even looked at it. Wow. Um, I did that in the Garside fight um, when she hit okay. me like 15 times when I was down on one knee. Um mm. And that should have been an immediate disqualification. Uh, yeah. Immediate. There is no no warning. And didn't even get a warning. Like, didn't even give her a friggin' warning. Um, yeah. I contested that one. They never even responded to me. Um, but they did respond to her. And if they watched the fight and feel like it should have went the other way, yes, they would either overturn it or even consider it a draw, which I'd be, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, or a no contest, like it never happened. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Orr, what's up, buddy? How are you? Is that the football player? Uh, Michael Orr is in the house. Hey, WB. Oh, you're talking to WBC. I'm like, hey, WBC, it's been a while. I, um, no, <laughs> I mean, I have the WBC title. Is that what you meant? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> is that Michael Orr, the football player? Michael Orr. No, Michael Orr. Michael, you didn't play football, did you? I'm talking about from the blind side. Was it his I name, know. Michael Orr? Michael Orr. It was his name, Michael Orr. I can't believe I have never put that together and and joke with Mike about that. No, no it's, it's no Orr. Orr. Oh, my bad. 
<laughs> Michael Orr has his own shows um, on Talking Fights, um, and he yeah. actually um, literally knows everything there is to know about boxing. Period. Like you nice. can ask him literally any question; he can answer the question. He's <laughs> he is very boxing knowledgeable about every fighter. Um, nice, great guy, great dude. Um, so you did face uh, so so many great opponents. Um, I com I commend you for that. Same career path I took. Um, I just wanted to fight the best of the best, period. Um, didn't care who it was, where it was. Didn't care really. I mean, I cared about the outcome, but sure. didn't always get the outcome I wanted. But that's what that's what it was. Yeah. Um, and starting at a late age of 32. Um, but you did fight until you were 42 when you retired. Um, for those of you watching that don't know, just to name a few, not all of them, but a few of the big names that she fought. Um, Laura Serrano, Kara Rowe, Belinda Liraquente, we just talked about, um, the Rillick, oh, I still can't get her first name, Agnieszka Rillick, yeah. I think, That's played close. with Carter multiple times, um, yeah. and so many others, y'all, um, literally didn't back down from nobody, took, just like me, any fight, anywhere, you name it, I'll be there. Um, who would you say, though, was your toughest opponent and why? Um, I'd, ha I'd have to say Zofia Kudasova. I, I fought Zofia Kudasova my first, when I was 11 and one, somebody or 11 and 0, somebody yeah. posted. And that was my, that. yeah, that was, that was my first loss, um, pay-per-view. Uh, and it, it, the story behind that is when the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. It's kind of a delay. You good? Uh oh, I'm good. Okay, okay, but uh, so, uh, Zofia Kudasova, um, tough, tough, just a big. <laughs> uh, they say a lightweight, but Jesus, that girl was big, and I thought she beat me from pillar to post. And when I came back to the corner, um, uh, my brother was there, my brother Chris was there, I could hear him screaming for me, he was commentating. I felt so bad afterwards because even before I got in the ring, I was tired. I, I I thought I'd overtrained. I just hit in the mitts. You know how you hit in the mitts and then you yeah, in the bag. You like, dang, uh, yeah. I'm tired before I even start. And and I thought I thought she just beat me to pillar to post. It was USA against Russia, and uh, and uh, lost it. I lost the fight. Um, fought her twice. Ended up fighting her later on in Chicago. Uh, lost again. And I thought she beat me both times. Um, I don't think to this day we could be fighting at 95 in a wheelchair. She still would beat me. Um, <laughs> you know, I just, you know, there's just certain people. It's just you like just hey, can't. styles make fights. And if there you go, there you go. Yeah. Big, rugged press. Um, and uh, I, I swear I thought she was about 140. Maybe when we fought, you, you know, she might have weighed in at 35, but she's about 40, right. 40. But she, she's like the guys. She, she went back up and wait overnight. Yeah. Yeah, solid. Just solid. No excuses. Trust me, no excuses. And there was surely no mercy because <laughs> I, I thought she just beat me outright, you know. Yeah. And that was my first loss. And from there, it just kind of went south with promotions. And, you know, it's 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 uh, you know, we'll try to talk about it a little later if we get a minute. But it's, you know, that yeah. it, the behind the scenes you. of boxing. But Absolutely. yeah, so, yeah. So via Kudasova to answer your question. Awesome. Awesome. Um, women's boxing channel. Um, don't think anyone real realizes just how important Brooks channel is to the history of women's boxing world. You bring yesterday back to today. Thanks so much. Chica. I appreciate you so much. Women's boxing channel. Um, couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Michael. Um, this really means a lot to me guys. Um, and thank you so much. All of you that tune in every week and support me or, or even when you can. Um, I don't think you guys really realize how much it means to me that y'all are coming. Um, and the, all the fighters that it, I literally have to get in tears sometimes thinking about it. Cause all the fighters that I have reached out to, I have yet to have one person tell me no other than Sue Fox. Um, just because she does it. If she does one interview, she'll have to do all the interviews, which I get. Um, but everybody that I've reached out to that has responded to me, guys, I'm booked out till June of 2024. Um, nice. and a lot of them are like, you know, I don't usually do interviews, but for you, I will. And I'm just like, you know, me, like, you know who I am. Like, <laughs> how do you know me, like, I know you, but how do you know me? I mean, that's just how I feel. Um, yes. you know, I mean, I think we all kind of feel that way. I don't, I don't know. I never felt like I was like famous or 
you know, because women, we just didn't get that attention like the guys do. Like I could walk around nine times out of 10, other than Mexico, nine times <laughs> out of 10. I mean, I could probably count on one hand how many times somebody stopped me like, like, oh my God, are you, are you Brooke Deardorff? Like the world right. champ? Right. It doesn't happen very often. Um, <laughs> right. So for all of these people that I looked up to for all these years to be like, yeah, I know. I mean, even like when I asked Christy, she, you know, but at the, at the induction, she's like, girl, I know who you are. I'm like, what? <laughs> even you, I mean, but people, I just, it, to me, it's like, it means a lot. Um, to, to know that so many other females, like I look up to so many people like that. We all know each other, like, right. cause we all care. Yes. Um, so yeah, that it means the world to me guys. So I, I do put a lot of time into um who i'm having on the show that i do a lot a lot of research i write out my show on paper then i type it up like i put a lot into it so that the shows hopefully and i hopefully each week they're week to week they're getting better i mean i'm still working on being on here and doing this because i've never done anything like this guys but i'm really putting a lot into it and trying to make it the best i can and get as many people to watch this because i think that the people need to hear these stories yeah. Um, it's important. And especially the fighters of today and the future, like they need to hear other fighters stories. Like you can learn so much from everybody's stories. Um, so I appreciate you guys back on point. Sorry, I got sidetracked. I appreciate you women's boxing channel and Michael Orr. Thank you. Um, you were also though, the first to headline an all women's boxing card with event entertainment promotions on pay-per-view. We kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, which fight, um, actually you had a lot of fights with them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, who were some of the other females that were on the cards? Was it anybody that like you, um, like were excited to have on the card or, you know, like tell us about some of the other females. I know I did one all female card in California, which was where I met Chevelle Hallback for the first time. I was speechless. Couldn't even talk to her. Cause I was like <laughs> starstruck. Um, she was talking to me and I was standing there like a retard or not like a retard, but like an idiot. Cause I'm just like, and I'm looking around and I'm like, she's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there were so many great females that I met on that card. So who yeah. was on the card with you and, um, who were you like excited to meet? Yeah, I'm going to give just a little segue. So fighting USA Tuesday Night Fights, uh, meet uh, Vicky Cal, uh, Jackie Callen, I'm sorry. Um, she was with James Tony at the time and stuff, promoting. Her, connects me with Rick Coolis and his wife. And uh, I fly out to California um, for a fight in California. Never flown before, never been to California. It was like they could have paid me $2 and I would have went. Yeah. Um, and so go out there from that, then we have this all pay-per-view card. And I just want to highlight this because I thank you, Box, Box Rec, because I got this from them, Box Rec. Um, this first card, it was it was like a league of their own. Women came from all over the nation. I mean, women I had really never heard of. I heard of, but never heard of, you know? Right. And when you're the main event or co-main event, you get to see the women in, in, we had like a locker room type thing going yeah. on. It was almost like a basketball game. And everybody was in their perspective places within this locker, within this room. Right. And she's like, oh, snap, that's, that's Frida Gibbs. Oh, man, yeah. you know? But I want to highlight who was on this card. So I was the main event, myself and Nora Daigle. Bonnie Canino versus Beverly Szymanski. Suzanne Riccio against Yvonne Trevino. Kathy Collins versus Christina Berry. Anissa Zamoran versus Brenda Rouse. Bridget Riley versus Shirley Prescott. Frida Gibbs win against Gail Grandchamp. Christine Dupre Dupree against Paula Frey. Uh, that, was a lot, that was it. So there was what? One, two, three, four, that was like five, eight. six. There was eight. Boxers, Ooh. eight, so 16 total, 16 female boxers on this car. That's phenomenal. 16. And it was with, um, in California yeah. with Judy Coolis. No, no, no. This was in, this was in, um, I think this was in Mississippi. This okay. Was, I think, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. We, yep. We fought in Mississippi. Okay. Um, yep. Um, and it was so crazy because that was my, my dad's from Mississippi. So a okay, lot of my nice. relatives down there came to the fight and, and, and we just set it off. I mean, yeah. we, every fight was a good fight. Fo it, you know, those were um, some good matches. Yeah. Split decisions. Christine Dupree and Paula Frey were split decision. Freedom. You know, she knocked everybody out. Bridget unanimous, uh, win, 
Uh, Anissa Zimmeron beat uh, uh, a majority draw against Brenda Rouse. Kathy Collins, you know, she, she was knocking people out too. Yep, yep. Um, Suzanne Rico, there was she, um, Yvonne, Yvonne Trevino beat, beat Suzanne in that. Um, it was a unanimous uh, decision. Uh, Bonnie won, uh, um, uh, Bonnie beat, uh, uh, Beverly, uh, Zemanski. That was a good fight. I remember that fight. And then, and then I won against, uh, uh, Nora Daigle and 16 women from all over the country flew into Mississippi for an all yeah. male car. It was That's phenomenal. Awesome. Um, it, is. it is. Yeah. Um, yep. I fought on, like I said, the, the one all female card, it was in California. Um, which is where I met Chevelle Hallbeck. I can't remember everybody that was on the card, um, but there was probably about that many fights. Um, it was all females. Um, I fought on the card. Chevelle, Chevelle Hallback fought Terry Blair on the mm. card. That was a phenomenal fight. Um, Elena Baby Doll Reed um, mm. fought. Who did she? I can't remember who she fought, but somebody from overseas, if I remember correctly. Um, was a really good fight. I can't remember. Um, Melissa McMorrow was on the card. Who else did I meet there? I can't remember. I'd have it, it's on box rec. I, I could pull it up. But anyways, th there was a lot of really good females. Um, and I also met Kalisha West didn't fight on the card, but she was at the oh, card. Okay. Um, and I met her there. Um, so yeah, phenomenal experience to just yeah. be able to fight with so many other amazing females um and i made some great friendships from that from that fight um so yeah awesome awesome i see the puppies i see the doggies they just want you they just want your attention come on mom this is kobe say hi, hi kobe. this is kobe bryant and this is Shua, hi. this is his girlfriend. Oh, I'm, hi, baby, baby. I'm babysitting her okay guys the babies yeah the babies i got you babies um, so you, um, also came down, which we, we briefly spoke about the first, um, appearing as a boxing family with your brother, you and both your parents on you on the Tuesday night fights. Um, you fought three times on the Tuesday night fights, which I can remember back in the day, always watching Tuesday night fights. Like yeah. it's Tuesday, like, no, like, <laughs> like it's Tuesday right now, y'all. And we're on no punch to pull with no mercy. It was Tuesday night. We were watching Tuesday night fights. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So did you have a good experience with the Tuesday night fights? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Like I said, it just, the, the hoopla of it, the media attention toward my brother, it, it, it took weight off of me and my other yeah. brothers, you know, my, 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 my other brothers, because it, all the attention was on Chris. So yeah. that which was cool for us. And so you, you didn't know if you were going to be on or not, if you were the walk-in bout, if anybody knows about that, you're a little four round, yeah. if you got a quick KO or something, they brought you in as the walk-in bout. And so I had that, I had the opportunity to be that a couple of times. And um, the first time it was, it was, I was definitely going to be on the other two were kind of like walk, walk-in bouts and I uh, got, got a chance to get on it. Yeah. Got you. Um, so I get, I always I kind of ask this people like, cause I have that one fight that really bothers me still today, um, which was the <laughs> dark side fight, which we kind of talked about. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot of them that bother me, but that's the one that really bothers me the most. Um, so would you say that the Lara Quente fight was the one that bothers you the most that still bugs you or is it a different one? No, no. Nah. And I, and I make a joke about this. <laughs> Even when I call her or talk to her husband, I, I always tell Isra that you, you know, I, you know, I won that fight. Um, uh, <laughs> Isra Gregor, uh, she, I went in again, here we go. When, uh, went into her hometown. Um, I don't know if she's actually from Maryland, but I fought and it was their promotion that I fought on. I got to a point after event entertainment, I was pretty, pretty much promoting myself and you know how that is, you know, you're just coming in, no one's speaking for you. Um, and you just, it is what it is. Yeah. And so that was one of those, I got off the canvas and I thought the, the rest of the rounds, I, I just stole the show. So um, didn't get the decision. But that was one of those fights. And she probably can look back and say today, we, we went out to eat afterwards. Um, and I'm a, you know, Flint police officer fighting. So I, I didn't, you know, the fight, you always want to win, like you say. But at the same yeah. time, you got a job to go home to. Yeah. Um, and she was getting an endorsement deal at the time. She was trying to sign, I think, with the vodka, vodka company that was promoting this. Big money involved. And yeah. I was shocked that they would call me to come in and fight. You know, right. you know how you're trying to get just a good good win? Yeah. Well, 
uh, Marty, her husband now, um, at the time, they, you know, they, they, I think they were dating. I don't think they were married then. But anyway, he was just helping. He said, we wanted to bring in the best to show them that we don't just bring in anybody to fight. Right. We bring in, you know, how you just bring in a script. I don't yeah, want to say Yeah, like we don't want to just bring in a, like a guaranteed win, like an easy yeah. win. Yeah. Yeah. And we went at it. I mean, it was a good fight. It was yeah. a great fight. But I just thought I won. That was one of those, like I said, to this day we joke about, or I joke about with So did she I ever say, admit to you that she felt like you might have won? No, 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 no. I, I, it, no, she didn't. Neither did Marty. But I think, <laughs> I think no girl, I won. I won yeah, that yeah. fight. I, I think she won. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think she felt like she, she really won. feels like she won, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say if she did or didn't. We got to go back and look. I got it on VHS. <laughs> we can, oh, yeah. We can I mean, it. yeah. She, she, <laughs> she, is it on YouTube? Is it on the internet? Yes. No, I didn't find it. It may be, I don't know, but we're gonna. I'm gonna look. look it up. If it's not, you gonna have to send it to me, girl, because I need to see I'm, this one. I'm gonna send it to you because my son ended up getting it on um on an eight track. For, no, I'm just kidding. He got, but he got it on DVD for me. But <laughs> but it was it was a good fight. That was just one of those that. But afterwards, I was just like, Lord, I, I see. I, I, I'm I'm good with any way any you know anything goes because yeah. all the, my my favorite scripture Romans eight twenty eight we know that all things work together for good to those who love yeah. the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So this was definitely um, a purposeful event, and she got the best of it because she ended up I believe getting a promotion from it, which is great. And yeah. um, and I, and I think this was um, and she can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Israel fought full time boxing. You know, um, this was her yeah. job. So yeah. I commend ladies that do that and wish the best for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I always joke with people all the time and I, and I say, you know, cause people that are fans of mine or whatever, always like, Oh, you know, you, you like you guys back in the day, you guys were all like beasts. Like, mm. like you guys were hardcore, like a different breed of fighters back then. And like all the way, I mean, from like our generation all the way back. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I said, but could you imagine if any one of us or all of us at that time frame literally did boxing full time mm. and did like the men and work two, three workouts a day. And that's right. all we did was boxing. Right. Right. Could you imagine how much great, like how much better we would have been? Like, I can't mm. even fathom how much better of a fighter I would have been if I, if all I did was boxing, if, yeah. like that's all I did. And, and you make an excellent point different fighter. Yeah. You make an excellent point because when I was a Flint police officer, I got up in the morning and ran, went yes. to work, went to work, yep. came back, went to the gym, worked out, yep. worked out took care of my son. You yep. know, uh, we, we did it all. We wore all yeah. hats. And then Absolutely. you go to a fight and get in the ring and fight for eight to 10 rounds. Yeah. Um, you know, and get out the, 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 get out the ring and pick up the baby and go to the. Yes. I literally you know? told everybody, I said, one, women's fights are more entertaining because they're mm. go. There's yes. more action. Um, there's not as much movement, a lot as much, uh, you know, vice looking around. Holding. We ain't there's holding. more action. Um, but I, women work harder than the men and I don't care what the men want to say. <laughs> we do. Um, we work full-time job, you know, we work, we work out, work full-time job, go to the gym for two, three hours till 10, who knows, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night right. with the kids in the gym. Yes. Like my first daughter grew up in the gym. Like yes. literally people will be yep. bottle feeding her. I'd be in the ring sparring that I get out. <laughs> and I get, I mean that, and then yeah. you do it all over again. Like yeah. it's tiresome. But we're mothers, so yeah, yeah, we, we do we it. We, and we, do. we, we um, do it, and we don't complain. Yeah, and we didn't get the luxury to go off to like camps and like focus. And girl, you, you no, better say it. Was, no, what the hell does focus mean? I mean, <laughs> I was lucky to get you know ten hours a week <laughs> boxing training, and then go right. and then go fight for a world title. I can't right. I'm just like it. It flabbergasted me because I'm just like, yeah. man, if I had really boxed full time like i would have been i'd have probably been undefeated like there would have been no question at all they could have gave any fight to anybody else even the right. ones that i feel like i won so i'm just but hey whatever i got <laughs> i you know it is what it is but yeah yes. all of us would be 10 times better if we had yes. that luxury um so next we're going to talk about we kind of spoke about it briefly but and 
last year um you were inducted into the women's international boxing hall of fame with me we were hall of fame sisters um tell me i can i can still picture my phone call today when i got that mm. phone call um so tell me about that phone call that you got um and what that meant to you i'll never forget it i was at mountaintop faith ministries where um i'm, I'm one of the um ministers there uh at the church and just volunteer my time and, and serving and I'm sitting in my office and the phone rings and I saw that it was Sue. And I said, oh, I went out, went outside. And she said, you have been inducted and, and nominated into the 2022 class for the Women International Boxing Hall of Fame. And just like how I feel right now, it, it was, uh, it was just a phenomenal feeling. Um, you talk about 10 years of work from 32, from age 32 to 42. Uh, you talk about being around boxing all your life. You talk about your parents, your siblings, your, your son, my son, Steven, and the work you put in and somebody recognizes it. Yeah. On that level. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been recognized throughout time, but on that level. Right. Um, that was just the ultimate for me uh, for women's boxing. And to represent, um, I felt more so as a trailblazer um, than anything. So um, um, I, I'm, I'm with them all the way. They, they know not from here on out, you, you, you know, not just because of that, but because now it's in Las Vegas. So I'm able to, you know, be here every year. But yeah. that was just a, just a phenomenal, phenomenal feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. I can still remember mine, uh, probably the same same reaction as you. I mean, I was literally almost speechless for a minute. But it, same exact same thing you said. I mean, I similarities. I mean, I had so many grit fights, um, and I literally fought top five from my third fight on. Um, after I beat Mia St. John the first time when I was three, and when I was for my third pro fight. I couldn't get anything like I couldn't I couldn't fight like warm up fights. I was fighting everybody I fought after that, I think, was a title holder defending a belt. And I was always fighting in their hometowns because, like I said, I didn't have the promoter and all that. But I just that was just the recognition that I needed to kind of like give me closure that I really felt like I left a mark and that everything I did was worth it. Yeah. Um, yep. So, yeah, I mean, that's the same reaction I got. Yeah. And I, I was crying. I was crying. Yeah. And, I mean, know, it's making me tear up right now. just thinking about it. I know. Um, it. I know. But yeah. Ab phenomenal. Um, yeah. I think we all probably had the same reaction, but yeah, just it hit uh, a little bit differently for, for some of us. I mean, some of them, I feel like some people kind of already know that it's coming eventually. Um, for me, it was like a huge surprise. Like I, I always wanted that. Like I've always dreamt that would be my closing spot in the sport of boxing was, Hall of Fame, making the Hall of Fame, making the Hall of Fame. But I, you know, I had been out of the game for 10 years, you know, yeah. so I'm like, well, it's probably never going to happen. But and, and, um, and if I if I could just jump in it right quick on that, people have to understand the criteria for it. It's not just your record. Oh, um, no. It, you know, yeah. And, and they just need to understand because my record, my record is not indicative of the work I put in, who I fought and yeah. what I brought to the sport. Um, right. The thing about it is, is that if you if you look at the totality of it, just with all of us, any woman that gets in that ring, any male that gets in that ring, any boxer, period, you automatically got 10 points right there. Oh, whatever. Yes. The scale. Like, it could be the, the scale could be 11. You yeah. have 10 right there just getting in. And people don't understand the work that it goes into boxing. I I, I was doing personal training with some ladies and different people, and, and they hit the bag and doing it. And I'm like, yeah, uh, you still got a minute left. Um, you just did a minute. You know, <laughs> the men do three per round right. for 12 rounds. Yeah. So they, they started to appreciate and understand this is work. Now, you it know, is. Yeah, you, you're watching on TV, but get in there. You know, you get, yeah. I, I'll never forget my brother fighting in New York City uh, when he fought Andrew, um, Andrew Galata. And they were booing him. They called him a boring fighter. You get your butt in there and fight. Right. This mother's fighting guys 30, 40, even 50 pounds bigger than him. Yeah, he, as a heavyweight, he's, he's yeah. Goliath with my brother. But, but to appreciate boxing, you got to be in there and understand boxing. And that's what yeah. I get with guys. You want to talk about Floyd. Yeah, Floyd is undefeated. You never beat his, you, you never beat his style, but you want to talk about his style. 
but right. you couldn't beat it for 50 fights. So, right. so that's where I just say when it comes to boxing, don't, don't talk to me nothing about boxing if you're not talking positive. Yes. Yeah. a sport that you could die in. Absolutely. Period. Agree. Yeah. Um, and I can even remember all the way back to, I didn't have very many amateur fights. I, ha I think I had, I don't know, 13 or 15 amateur fights. Um, but I can remember all the way back to then and getting out of the ring and people making comments, you know, from the, from the people watching, um, and, oh, you should have did this or, oh, you should. and I always, have you been in the ring? <laughs> have you sparred even like, or have you done anything boxing related or are you just a boxing fan? Right. Oh, I don't, you know, I'm just, what? then don't talk to me. Cause you don't know anything. Like I don't have time for your comments. I don't have time for your negativity. I don't have time for your, what you, you know, your advice because you don't, you've never done it. So you can't help me. Right. You can't help me right. from watching me on the outside. If you don't know what it's like. Um, right. Yeah. I used to say, hate when people would do that um yeah it's just annoying it's, i'm the same way like don't talk to me get out of here right. um so also though another huge emotional proud moment for your whole family though was that also same year as you your mother rose bird was also inducted with us last year at the international women's boxing hall of fame um your sister accepted her award at the ceremony um, tell everyone a little bit about your mom and her accomplishments and like her background for those that don't, may not know. Um, and then how about her getting inducted into the hall of fame with you and what that meant? Yeah. I, uh, when you asked the last question about, um, the whole emotions of it, that's what I was going to segue into is my mom, because after they told me that I was inducted, they said, and your mom also is going to be inducted with you. The first mother daughter combination to, to go into the hall of fame. And I just lost it. I think people in people in the in the church office thought that somebody had died. That's how much I was just bawling, crying, and they couldn't. They were trying to console me, and because my mom, anybody could tell you any of the thousands of boxers that came through the Flip Police Athletic Boxing Club and the Joe eventually the Joe Bird Boxing Academy, they know that my my parents was the the pillars of boxing in the city of Flint, and my mom was uh, worse in a good way. Of training than my dad. When when my dad would leave to go have to go places, uh, we'd come in. Who's who's coaching us? And they'd be like, uh, "Mama's gonna coach us today." And we, oh man, man, because she would. Her famous saying was, "Make that bag sing." That means when you drill in that bag, that that chain better be sing. Yeah, yeah. It, it better be. You know, she was just dynamite. She she coached my father. When my father, we were poor growing up. I never forget on my birthday in um, I think '68, my dad was fighting. I looked through box rec, and my dad was fighting in Ohio, and my mom was his coach. He couldn't afford a second of uh, this or that. The water, right. man, and they got the water, the white man, and all the bucket thrower, the cut man. My mother was all that, <laughs> and didn't know what she was doing. But she, right. she she loved her husband, and she was gonna cheer him on to to win, lose, draw, whatever. But that was my mother. And raising eight kids on top of that. Yeah. You know, you still had to do that while you're at the gym and while yep. you're doing things. And so that was my mom. She loved boxing. How she got into it was she would holler from the bleachers or from the stands so loud for my brothers, you know, and, and the famous thing that I joke around our house is she would say, get in there, Joe Edward, get in there. And uh, and Chris, <laughs> Chris said he'd make a comment. Joe was getting beat so bad. He'd be like, get out of there, Joe Edward, get out of there. <laughs> but, but my mom would cheer so loud that my dad made her an assistant coach because you couldn't cheer for amateur boxing. You can't coach from the corner. Right. You have to be quiet. Yeah. So he so just she, wanted to make her be quiet. <laughs> exactly. And she became, she became, I would say the best coach in the nation, the best female boxing coach in the nation. She, yes. was, she was presumed the second female licensed second in the nation back in the seventies. And, and she has been coaching up until her, up until her death. So um, just the greatest. And so when Sue said, I didn't even really too much know about your mom when she was telling me on the phone, she said, but everybody on the committee knew about her. They all knew about her. She was in the corner for when, when Chris beat Holyfield, she was in the corner. When he beat Vitaly Klitschko, yeah. she was in the corner. When he lost to uh, Vladimir, he was, she was in the corner. When I won mine, win, lose, draw, she yeah. was in our corner. 
And she was in our corner more ways than one. And to have your mom, the heartbeat of the family, the one that that propels and cheers you on, um, rain, sleet, snow, hail is there. Yeah. That was just the ultimate to me and my siblings to have her right there. And along with my dad, but you know, mothers are the heartbeat of a family. Oh, absolutely. So, so that's absolutely. what it was for us. So thank you for the, your time on that and asking me about, about my mom. Absolutely. I thought it was, it was awesome to watch, uh, you know, the first mother daughter at the inductions and being there firsthand to uh, witness it. Um, it. It was a very emotional time, but it was so special. Um, yeah. And both of you deserve it. Um, both you. of you very well deserve it. So I, I thought it was phenomenal to be able to witness Thank that. So I had to ask you about it. I, I was hoping <laughs> you wouldn't get emotional. Like, I didn't want to make you emotional, but I wanted people to know that about your mom. Yes. Um, yes. And so let's see, go jump back over here. So uh, Women's Boxing Channel, agree with Brooke for the most part. Women have to work so hard to prove, it seems. Yes, I agree there. Women's Boxing Channel, we do. Um Damn, uh, we're going to talk about this too, but he says, damn fighter, police officer, church minister, promoter. What a woman. <laughs> she is, isn't she? Thank isn't you. Isn't she? <laughs> Such an amazing story. The first mother-daughter induction into the Hall of Fame. Yes, they were. And I got to witness it with my own two eyes because we were inducted the same year. So it was phenomenal. Yes, sisters. Yes. yes. We're sisters for life now. Uh, yes. You make a great point in football, soccer. They say fans have the right to boo us, etc. But in boxing, it's different. Fans of boxing have to know their place, as it's all about the fighter because of the immense danger. That's the difference. Yes, I agree. Yes, I feel like if um, if you're a boxing fan, we appreciate you um, in more ways than one because without the fans, there would be no us. So right. we appreciate all the fans. But if you don't, if you haven't physically done it and don't really know what you're talking about, don't give uh, actual fighters like you can have a conversation with us about it, but don't be like, well, you should have did this or why didn't you do that when you don't really know because you've never experienced it or been in there to uh, feel like the adrenaline and the emotions and everything that goes into even sparring for that matter, Mm -hmm. let alone actual fight. Um, you can't always mentally make your body do what you're thinking or react a certain way. Um, and if you, unless you're in the ring and have done it, you don't know that. So it's not that I don't want your opinion. It's just like, I don't want to be dragged down by a negative comment that you made that I should have done when I'm already probably telling myself that one and already feel like doo-doo because I already know in my head, I should have did that, but you know, you've never experienced it. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with yeah. that. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about women's boxing today versus back in our day? Whew. Um, I think that it's moving forward. I don't think it's moving fast forward. Um, you know, we just had a all women's card with Clarissa and, and you know, so, Uh, And that took how long, Um, you know, where you thought that they would have picked up the mantle 10, 15 years ago and ran with it. Yeah. We're still we're still we're still hustling for the same game and trying to get, you know, um, equal pay. I don't agree with and I always tell Layla, well, not always, but when we talk, I don't agree with uh, three minute rounds for women. I don't agree with 12 rounds. I don't I I think it's good right where it's at. Um, we, we give them an action pack compared to 12 rounds of men holding and doing and yep. looking and not that, you know, not all of them, but some of them kind of, you know, but I, I think um, it, it does need to, to um, produce more female fighters of recognition. Yet we had yep. that, you know, we, we've had, you know, Kate, the Katie Taylors, Clarissa, uh, or Amanda, you know, those guys, but those are far few and in between. Uh, yeah. from the ones that are struggling and trying to make it, where are they, yes. you know, where are, are we putting them on the cards to promote them? Um, because you can't, you know, it's just like a basketball team. You need five to play on, yeah. at a game yeah. and probably 10 or 12 to, to practice. So yeah. we're, we're the, pa- we're the practice players, right. <laughs> you know, I agree. we need to get in the game too. So, yeah. um, so yeah. And I, and it goes back to the promoters, man, we it, dirty dogs, man, just dirty dogs. It's just so yeah. sad. And it so is. until, until, some promoters can come in that 
truly love the sport and not it is not in it to um as uh, a saying was once said about a promoter he would rather make a crooked nickel than a straight dollar yeah um until we get those type of promoters that love the sport love the athletes more yeah, than more about the, the fighters than the pay yes yeah yep then um boxing is going to keep Going yeah. Down. And I mean, you what's know, so uh, silly about that to me is even if you like that, have a promoter like that, that cares more about the fighters and their well-being and their careers and giving them e equal opportunities, the money is going to come regardless. Right. So why not do it the right way? Yeah. The money is going to be there whether you do it crooked or you do it right. right. It's going to be the same outcome. Yeah. Um, that's always the one thing that frustrates me with the promoters, um, not giving more people opportunities and it's great. Don't get me wrong. I love seeing all these girls on the cards. Um, but there's so many other fighters up and coming fighters, um, or even past fighters that are still fighting that I feel deserve those opportunities too, um, yes. to be showcased, um, yes. or make more money and they're not getting that. So right. there is, like I said, I think I said earlier, there are a few, um, a few of them that are getting the spotlight. Um, and getting closer to the equal pay, um, but few and far in between, like you said, there's just not enough of them. More people need that opportunity. Um, Who's the one that disagrees? Who is that? Is that a female? I disagree. Three minutes or uh, women's boxing channel. Three minutes are uh, fine as it's legal except for title fights. But I do think the first move is for 12 rounds. So here's the thing. Women's boxing. I've always said too, similar to you. Um, People always ask me that, what I think about three-minute rounds. First of all, I would never in my entire life sign a contract for a three-minute round, whether it be 10 or 12, um, until I had 100% equal pay. That right there. If that you right want to pay me the $30 million that you're paying um, <laughs> the male champions or $40 million or $50 million plus a percentage of the views... Um, if you want to pay me that I would fight 20 rounds at three minutes. If you want to pay me equal pay, but I'm not paying, I'm not going to, why would I give you more of a show for a quarter or a third of the price that they're paying the men? Right. So it's not that women can't fight three minute, 10 rounds, three minute, 12 rounds, because we can, I trained right. it every day, three minutes with 30 seconds in between is what I trained. Come so on, girl. Tell them how we, we how we can, work out. We can do it. Um, 100% we can do it. Um, but some girls may do it, but I would never sign a contract for three-minute rounds. I don't care if it's four-rounder for three minutes. I don't care how many rounds it is. I'm not doing it unless you give me 100% equal pay to what the men are making. Why? I'm already getting screwed and getting it shoved right up my rear every day. Why would I do that to myself? Like that doesn't even make sense. Come on now. Who's Eddie? It's all because Eddie don't uh, want promoters it. don't want it, so they don't want don't, they don't have to pay equal. Well, there you go. So it's not on the fighters. Eight by three, ten by three. TF. Oh, oh Eddie Hearns. Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. Yeah, well, they don't want to pay. Yeah, they don't want to pay, but they pay the ones that they got up there that they're showcasing every day. They're getting, mm -hmm. I mean, not equal, but pretty darn close. WBC is British. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Eddie don't want to pay the same. Yes. Well, Eddie probably doesn't want to pay the same. He does pay a select <laughs> few fighters. Right. Um, like we were just talking about, there is a few um that are getting close to equal pay but even those ones aren't getting equal so i wouldn't sign a three-minute contract if i were them either even with the with the over million dollars that that the big girls are making right now i mean there there's a couple they make there's a couple of them a handful of them that are making in the millions um and you guys know what i'm talking about this ain't surprising and it it's all over the news it's not like it's it's a big secret there's a few right. girls that are making million dollars a fight or close to it by the time they're done. Um, but even if I was them, I wouldn't sign a contract for a three minute fight deal because the men make the men make 30, 40, 50 million. 
So no, no, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, back to that. Um, are there any current up and coming fighters, um, that you're a fan of, or that you're not really a fan of, or that you do like, or don't like? No, I appreciate all the, all the women boxers. Like I said, all boxers period. Um, but you know, my girl pound for pound, the greatest came out of Flint, Michigan. And she yep. hails from Flint, Michigan. Clarissa <laughs> Shields. Yes. I, uh, I, I appreciate her. Uh, just adore her. Uh, I've never met her. Um, that's I ironic, but I've never met her, but, um, just appreciate her game and her sport, her confidence, her boldness. Um, would love to meet her one day. But yeah. she's, she's just my favorite. I appreciate, you know, uh, um, Katie Taylor, you know, all the, all the ones that are fighting, you know, just, uh, um, uh, Jessica, Jessica McCaskill, just, there's, there's just a lot of them out there that are doing very well, but by far to sum it up the goat, yeah. the, the W goat. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, I haven't had the, pleasure of meeting her either. I'm still working extremely hard, everybody on here, because I know a lot of people ask me. I've only had a few of the current fighters on so far, because I don't think you guys realize how hard it is to get in contact with the current fighters. Um, I have some coming up, uh, actually several coming up, um, but it's it's a lot harder for me to connect with the active, like really active current fighters right now. Um, but I'm still working on it. So I'm not giving up, but I do have a lot of really big ones that are current fighters coming up later in the year. Y'all. So just, you know, bear it's with me here, here. but everybody's <laughs> stories are fame. Everybody's stories are great. Yeah. Um, I know um, for me, there was, uh, I had a, quite a few girls that I looked up to that I considered like role models or people that I looked up to who were some of the female fighters that you um, wanted to take after or looked up to. I didn't really know them personally. So um, I, I couldn't, you know, be able to look and go, ooh, I want to pattern or do or whatever. The, the only person I had in front of me, which was the greatest person, was my mother. My mother. I like that. Just I in like everything that. she did. Just in everything she did, including boxing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I love that answer, actually. I love that answer. <laughs> um, I'm assuming also then on the men's side would have been your brothers and your dad. Yeah, of course. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Saw, the, saw the sweat, the tears and what they put in and the things that they did. And, you know, that is literally a true phrase, though, everybody that's watching. Like if you don't box, but I'm telling you the blood, sweat and tears thing, that is that is for real. Like mm -hmm. you can go in the gym, you can be working out hard as heck and you're sweating all of a sudden. You just emotional and just break down in tears because you're like, what am I doing? Yeah. Why am I here? <laughs> why am I doing this? Like, why am I putting myself through this? Right, Literally, right. blood, sweat, and tears. I'm not even joking. I, I mean, that's, that's how I, that's how that's how I felt when I retired. When I against Laura, it's like it if was, you know, you know. If you know, yeah, you know. It's like why that's, am I here? What am I? Forty two fighting. Why? Right. If, why, what? <laughs> if you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Katie Taylor versus Chantel, for example. Katie Taylor gets uh, V A Mill and. Chantel gets 500k. You can't bank on it yet. Men fighting for the WBC title will get three times more. Yeah, 100%. Hmm. Totally agree with you there, Women's Boxing Channel. And it's not going to change anytime soon, except for <laughs> a, few. A, few, yeah. a few. A few fighters are getting um, close. Um, but we were just talking about that earlier as well. There are so many more girls um, from the past that are still fighting and upcoming fighters that I have personally seen that deserve that spotlight with these other girls that are up there. Like, yeah. I love seeing them. Don't get me wrong. I love watching Clarissa fight. I love watching Katie Taylor fight. I love watching Amanda Serrano fight. I love, I love watching the fights. Mm -hmm. um, there needs to be more girls aside from just them on the cards that deserve yeah. that spotlight. That's where, that's my point I'm trying to make. Um, and I think so many others that deserve it. And Brooke, if I, if I just jump in, I think too that if we had more all female cards, you know, yeah. instead of one one every ten years, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, then you you can highlight these these women. Yeah, um, and there just needs to be more promotions on that. Absolutely, absolutely, totally agree with you, hundred um, percent. And then Women's Boxing Channel asked about this earlier, but I knew we would talk about it at some point. Outside of boxing, you were also a Flint, Michigan police officer. Thank you for your service. Uh, my husband and I, like I said, we met in the Army, um, so we're both Army vets. Um, but tell us a little bit about your time on the force and um, your experience with being an officer. 
man. My, my brother said I should write a book. Uh, you probably I, should write a book. Yeah. I, um, yeah, it was prophesied to me. Somebody would stated it as well. But at 31 and a half years of law enforcement, started in uh, 86, graduated from Grand Valley State University with a, a bachelor's of science degree in criminal justice, went to the Michigan State Police, served nine years with the state capitol post in Lansing, Michigan, loved it, loved my job. And um, but it was stated to me that uh, I wasn't going to be there long. I was going to move back to Flint. And I did. And um through a divorce and moved back to Flint, joined the Flint Police Department, served nine and a half years there, or eight and a half years, I'm sorry, served eight and a half years there, uh, served five years undercover narcotics. Crazy oh, story. Amazing. Um, look, this is how crazy it was. So I'm on pay-per-view, I'm on Tuesday night fights, I'm fighting, I'm doing my thing, and I'm on the and street you're undercover. and an undercover cop. And we had a we had a drug bus one time on the streets where we were doing a, a, a flip sting and uh, um, <laughs> we were the ones doing the selling and, you know, fake crack, whatever. And dude looks at me and goes, I, true story. He goes, you look familiar. Now, mind you, I'm an undercover police officer in the city of Flint. And the dude right. goes, you look familiar. I said, dude, you probably say that to everybody. He don't no, no, I know you from somewhere. I was like, whatever. Do you want to buy it or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the exchange, pump the brakes. They pull in with the mark units. Boom. He didn't even, he looks at me and he goes, you're Tracy Bird. I know you. <laughs> I've seen you box on TV. Oh my God. I can believe that. I was going to say, we, as soon as you said you were doing undercover, I'm like, yeah. how in the world when you're from Flint and you're doing yeah, you're getting blown up by the media, and you're from <laughs> Flint, and you're a yeah. Flint police officer undercover. How yeah. in the heck did nobody recognize you? I got a lot of stories. I mean, from people from going in, do, doing house, you know, busted in and stuff, to to seeing former boxer, wow. you know, boxers that used to box with my dad, used to box at you know in the other gyms, and and just re, re, you know just ended up being you know, on drugs and different things. And, yeah. and, um, you, you know, it, it was, uh, you, you know, I know your show is no mercy, but I, I truly believe God put me in that spectrum to just be a blessing to them and to, yeah. to let people that I did have to arrest or do to know that you're still a person, you know, I don't disrespect you because you committed a crime. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to show some love, but I still got to put the cuffs on, but I'm going to treat you decent. And so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's all about so, respect and everybody yeah. makes mistakes and right. you can still come back from it. It doesn't mean your life is over. Right. It doesn't mean it's the end. It doesn't mean yeah. all of that. I know so many people that have come back out such a better person from yes. that experience. So, yeah. um, yeah. yeah, all love and respect. I mean, but if, if you, if you break the law, I mean, that's just. How you gotta do what you gotta do. That's it. You can yeah. come back. Yeah, but my last 14 years was here in Las Vegas with the uh, Clark County School District Police Department. Love my babies, love the high schools and middle schools that I served at. And uh, crazy accident, fell off my bike. Our, our, our schools are like college campuses and riding through um, the cafeteria, hit hit uh, a door, herniated two discs, and that was it. Oh. it. 27, uh, 2015 was done. And ended up retiring in 2017, and um, been been retired for the, you know just um, doing. I'm in, I'm in school right now um, under a voc vocational rehabilitation, uh, but also just serving in ministry full time with my church. Like I said, I got to give a shout out to my church, Mount Top Faith Ministries, and to my Absolutely. bishop in house, my first lady, Dr. Marielle House, and the, just everybody there. And uh, I just just love the Lord, love what I'm doing. And uh, I, I love his people and just, we're all his people. So just absolutely. Try, try to absolutely. do right by him and look, try to do right by you and uh, this show and, uh, and women's boxing. Oh so you, yeah. Know. That's impossible. Impossible for you to not <laughs> impossible yeah. for you to not. Yeah. Um, Hamadouche is also a police officer. I did not know that. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. Um, yeah, it is funny. Tracy, love you, babe. <laughs> Amen. What's up, Tony? Missed you in the house. Welcome in. Thank you for commenting. If anybody else is out there besides them that even want to comment just to say hi or get a shout out from me or Tracy. My peeps are supposed comment. to be on. Look, I said my, yeah, I said my peeps are supposed to be on. I'm looking for Lori and Chris and 
Uh, I, I don't Chris, know where are you at? I need my shout out, Chris. I haven't seen you since the induction either. Where I need my shout out. What? Um, yeah, if you guys are listening in, to, give me a comment. Let me know you're here. Everybody that's everybody that's out there listening, let me and Tracy know you're here. Just say what's up. How's it going? Hey, fam. Great show. <laughs> Love you, sis. Something. Let us know you're watching. Um, I do. We spoke about this uh, before the show and after the show. I do pride my show. Um, on being about the truth, all about the behind the scenes BS that all of us have had to go through in women's boxing. Um, it's just never talked about. Um, we talk about that. It's never talked about. I feel like the current future fighters, along with all the female boxing fans, um, need to hear these stories and they need to know about all the, the, the dirty stuff that goes on because um, people don't want to tell them. Um, I can't tell you how many people came up to me at the induction. Some of the amateur fighters, like, like, I just want you to tell me, like, tell me the truth. Like, yeah. te- yep. like, tell me like what really, like, what, what do I, if I go pro, what do I really like? What do I, what, what do I, what should I expect? And yes. I mean, I flat out told them like some of the stories and some of the things that I've personally gone through that I know all of us have gone through, um, because I feel like they should know that stuff. Like it helps them prepare and be able to face it head on and know what to do in that situation. Because most of us had never dealt with that before. And nobody told me, Hey, watch out for this. Hey, watch out for this kind of promoter. Hey, watch out for that. And I did it all by myself, me and my husband. So we learned as we went. So it would have been nice to have somebody be like, Hey, watch out for this kind of stuff or watch out for this kind of person. Or so I feel like, People need to know. Um, right. I know we kind of talked about it briefly. Um, that you've also faced some of that adversity and some of that uh, negative stuff in boxing. Do you want to give some of your your examples? Yeah, I, I just I, just like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, always have a backup plan. Um, I would always say let let boxing, especially for women starting off. Uh, this is specifically to women, men. You know, you whatever you do, you. But for us women. You need a day job. You just need a day job. You need a backup because right now this is not proven to be enough to sustain you. Um, you need medical insurance. Boxing, uh, yeah, they have insurance when you fight, but they don't have insurance after the fight. Yeah. So, or when you're the, yeah, you go to the hospital, they'll pay that little coverage. After that, you on your own. So, yeah. Um, you have to make sure you have these things in place. One thing I learned from my brother is you don't need a big entourage. My, my brother, Chris, had uh, my son at the time was, I think, 10 or 11. His son was eight and uh, another little kid. And they played Nintendo to relax him. You don't need you, you don't need the fanfare and the hype. It, um, it, one, it takes away from your money. Yeah. You, you pretty much just need a coach. And that's it. You and the coach. I'm serious. Yeah. You know, you get up high, yeah, okay, get you a cut man, do whatever. But you and the coach, and the coach should be all three. My dad was the cut man, the water boy, the, the, the towel guy, the, the, t- the bucket holder, all of that. So I would say don't get a big entourage of, of people that you have to pay out. Um, count up your cost. See what you're making. One thing I learned from my brother, Chris, he had a good attorney. John Hornerer was the best. You need an attorney to look over your contract. To be yeah. able to go behind the scenes and know what the look at this, okay? If you on TV, they start at the top, right? You might be number four or five. You might be number eighteen down on the list. So that yeah. means you get the crumbs. Know where you are in the sink of things when it comes to it. Get you a good attorney so that he can get behind the scenes to know what the purse is. Meaning, what are they getting for this show? What is yeah. the TV right? What are the the TV giving these promoters? Cause that's how they make their money and you yeah. don't make yours yeah. because you don't know what they're getting. Yeah. So you got to know these things. So I would say starting off, do your homework, make sure you count up the cost, make sure you stay small. You start off small. You don't got to let anybody, anybody don't even know who you are. Your, your gifts will make room for you. Yeah. And it'll, and you'll prove yourself. But I would clearly say that. And I would give you a Jerry Maguire moment. Okay. When they show, when he showed up in the limo and left in the taxi, yeah, that's how they do you when you lose. Yep, you will have a Jerry Maguire moment. Yeah, so make sure you have you a backup plan. Make sure you call you an Uber or a Lyft because you might not even have money for a taxi. Yeah, that's my advice to you. 
That is a very good point. A very, very good point. And that is a hundred percent accurate. A hundred percent accurate. Yeah. Um, they, 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 they'll put you down, man. They, they, they will leave you. You are, you are as good as your last fight. Yep. They will 100%. leave you quick, fast, and in a heartbeat. And when you think you're signing something, like I said, signed for as long as I had the title, my my I thought my minimum was ten thousand, baby. That was my. That's all I was getting. Yeah. They could they could have got eighty, a hundred thousand for that pay per view. I was yeah. only getting ten. Yeah. If that. And yeah. I sometimes I had to fight for my ten. So exactly. She is spitting pure knowledge, Michael. Hundred percent facts. From the people who have been there and done that. Yes, 100% facts. I can attest to every word that she is saying. It is factual <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> um, yes, facts. Um, since retiring, though, I know you did a lot of mentoring. You've kind of talked about that and stuff with the church. Um, you did provide boxing fitness to the youth. President mm -hmm. director of the nonprofit youth program called, is it You Bear? Yes, it stands for you be educated, athletic, and resourceful. Yes. Yeah. Along with doing personal training. Are you still doing that now? No, when, when COVID came um and some things happened with, with my Yeah, with, with voc rehab uh, and all that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but uh I am doing my U Bear, my nonprofit. What we do is that we put on fundraisers and different events to raise money for other youth nonprofits. Amazing, amazing, amazing work. Um, what is the message that you would like to give to all the young girls and up women out there in the sport of boxing that are trying to overcome difficult times? A am I on? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're kind of going in and out. I'm just making sure I'm not going in and out. You're not going in and out at all on, on me. Am, are, am I better? Uh, you're freezing. Oh, I'm freezing. Oh no, Eric. Do we ha do we lose connection, Eric? Let me know in the chat. Am, am I getting better? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you see me? Okay now. Uh huh. I can see you and everything. It's just you're kind of freezing up a little here and there. Okay. But I can I can see you and hear you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. What is the message that you would like to give um, or let all the young girls and women know that are trying to come up in boxing or um, going through difficult times? Like, what's a message you would like to send to them, the listeners? I, I would say to the young girls that are, especially the boxers, is don't give up, train hard, always know. And I know it's a cliche that, you know, um, somebody's always out there training harder than you. So you got to train harder than them. And you have to have in your mind that you are the best, win, lose, or draw. Does it does you are the best? I used to say to myself, if I lost, I just had an off day. Yep. Don't I'm, I am not a loser because I lost. And I, I'm I'm uh, I'm a Christian, love the Lord. I'd say put God first. You know, if you don't know Him, come to know come to know Him as your Lord and Savior. Um, I believe every platform allows me the opportunity to um, share Christ and and the fact that God is with you; He'll never leave you nor forsake you. It, uh, my my worst. And I always say this worst time in my life was 2015 when I lost my mother and I lost my firstborn grandchild. Um, and then I had a little puppy I lost. And it was all within six months. And um, if it wasn't for my church family, if it wasn't for my natural family, if it wasn't for my understanding and knowing that God was with me, that this isn't our home. We just pilgrims passing through, as they say, yep. this is not what God intended for us. And I would say to you, Young girls, know your purpose. And if you don't know it, pray about it. Mm -hmm. Find out. Got to reveal to you your purpose. Yeah. Everybody has a purpose. Absolutely. And and, uh, and a platform to use boxing for. Because one thing that I, I had I had asked, and I kid you not, Robin Blake, 19, Chris probably can remember, uh, I want to say 78. Anyway, it was the Golden Gloves, National Golden Gloves in uh, down in Atlantic, Georgia. Georgia. My dad. My dad took me and my mom. We went down there. He had one fighter fighting. And Robin Blake, uh, I got his autograph. I always tell, I used to tell Jackie Frazier this. Her, her dad didn't sign my autograph. But I got Robin Blake to sign my, I didn't even know who Robin Blake was. He won Robin Blake, John 316. And I said, what is this? And he goes, you're at a hotel? Yep, that's when they used to have Bibles at the hotels. So he yeah. said, look, for it. Look, look it up. And I did. And it changed my life. 
that one moment. Mm -hmm. So I say to any girl out there, if your passion is boxing, God has a platform for you and just find your purpose in it. And if it's to, and, and a lot of times it's to share your experience with other girls so that they can come to boxing because this is a beautiful sport. Absolutely. And you're going to meet so many women. I, I traveled the world because of boxing and I would not be on here with, with Brooke if it wasn't for boxing. Yeah, exactly. So I would say trust the process and put God first. Yes. And I always tell everybody, um, I feel like, you know how everybody in, knows in college, you know, people do sororities or um you know stuff like that and it's, it's it's a sisterhood like a lifetime sisterhood i truly feel like boxing is this is is the same thing um because every not every but 95 percent of the females that i have connected with or met at one time or another or spoke with um truly will come through if you need them um, yes. or will talk to you or respond to you or come on the show for example um, but I feel like we're all a sisterhood. So, um, to me, it, it's that bond. Um, and I feel like we all kind of feel that way. We're all kind of connected in that way. Um, so I totally agree with that. Did you come here? You've come say hi right now before, cause I'm almost done. So come say hi. <laughs> my husband. I'll say you, you, uh, I'll say you mentioned, mentioned a sisterhood. I'm sure my, my girl's listening. Uh, I'm an AKA, I'm a, a member of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Oh, she's so AKA, babe. That you mentioned that, so. Oh, yeah. uh oh, Tra oh yeah, uh, ski Tracy, my yeah, my husband. <laughs> he kept peeking in the door, so I said, "Just come say hi to her real quick before we finish the show." What's up? This is Chris. I, you probably remember him from the induction. Yes, yes. I, I was telling my sister about him. Okay, <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. so she was oh, AKA. Yeah. Who's AKA? Tracy just said she was AKA. <laughs> I I wasn't, um, but if I would have pledged. I, I did my degree after the military. I had my <laughs> our first daughter. Um, so I did my, I got my bachelor's degree online because okay. I had a baby. So I didn't get the at school experience, but I would have been, a I would have pledged Delta if I, if uh, I would have known. You know what? It's so funny because you, you look at the parallels and usually s somebody's best friend is a Delta. My best friend, Jackie Demby is a Delta. It's always like that. I always yes. say my sons is a Delta. I got a story behind it, but yep, that's how I would roll. <laughs> absolutely. 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 Um, women's boxing channel uh, and Michael, I admire you, Tracy, for your words today. Great stuff. Have to say, Michael says, very inspiring. Uh, women's boxing channel. Yeah. Probably never speak to Tracy again, but boy, this is a great <laughs> night. Thanks to Brooke for doing the, these interviews. Love them. Take it easy, Tracy. I appreciate you guys so much um, and, and for tuning in every week, even, even if you don't speak, just because it means so much to me. And, and help me share it, guys. Continue to share the live and let people know about the show. Tell them about it. Tell them what it's about. Um, tell them how excited you are to watch it every week. Like We need to yeah. get other girl fighters, current fighters, future fighters, other fans. Like We need to get more people in here so we can yes. get the word out, y'all. We need to get it spread. We need it yeah. to spread like wildfire. Um, yes, she is going to Vegas again this year. So yeah, we'll. See I live in Vegas, Vegas, Chris. So I'm gonna see you. Did you know she lives in Vegas? I did not oh, know for Vegas. the longest time that you moved to Vegas. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't realize you had moved to Vegas. I've been Which here almost like, twenty years. Oh, girl, I did oh, not know yeah. that. <laughs> I did not know that. But we will be back this year. Um, Sue Ooh. invited me back as a special guest. Um, nice. So yes, we will be back. I keep telling him we need to book our hotel. Get it in now. Get it in now, girl, because it will book And every time he's like, I know, I know. I said, no, you're not listening to me. We need to book the hotel. This is a 10-year anniversary. It's two years oh. and one. I don't know if they got extra rooms. We need to book a room. <laughs> when we Chris, get off here, I'm going to tell him again, we need to book a room right now. I'll see you soon. So, yeah. Yes, it'll, sir. It won't be that far off. October is not that far away. No, it's not. It goes quick, too. It goes very yeah. quick. Oh man, yeah. the years now fly by like they fly by so fast now. Yeah. Um, but before we wrap it up, is there anything else that you wanted to discuss that we didn't talk about that you want people to know, or did I do my research good and I pretty much covered it all? Yeah, you did it great. I mean, you 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 covered everything. I, I appreciate your time and and uh, just people tuning in, and uh, you got me locked and loaded from here on out. So I appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, is there anybody that was that you wanted to shout out um, before that was supposed to be listening? They didn't comment. They're probably here. They just <laughs> didn't comment. Um, that you want to uh, shout out. Not, yeah, just uh, just like I say, my church family just uh, love my pastor, yeah. Bishop Clinton House, and and uh, his wife, our first lady, Dr. Mary L. House, and just to our church family, my dad, uh, keep him in your prayers. He's he's up in age, Joe Bird, and uh, uh, still going strong, and and just all my siblings, to my uh, to my brothers, you know, and and just uh, um, to Charles, uh, Joe, Timmy, Ronnie, Patrick, and Chris, Lori, and Kay. That's how I put them in order when I pray for them, and uh, just. Uh, just, yeah. you know, thank God for each one, every one of them. And to my son, Stephen, and my daughter in love, Leah, and my grandkids, uh, Simeon and Kalea, those are my heartbeats. And so thank God for them. And, and just everybody that tuned in and just uh, uh, just appreciate you guys. Brooke, I love you, sis. And uh, we, yeah. we bond to life. So, yes, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, lots of prayers um, to you and the whole family. Um, I'll definitely say a prayer for your dad. Um yeah, I, I, sisters for life. I I feel like I tell everybody that um, Chevelle, me and Chevelle are close like sisters. I mean, there's several of them, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, just could pick up the phone and call anytime if you need to talk to somebody. It's just yeah. nice to have somebody else that kind of can feel your experience and understand where you're coming from with certain scenarios. So um, I appreciate you so much. Um, tell everybody quick though, before we, um, end this though, where can they connect with you? Um, all your fans out there, tell them your credentials, where they can find you on like social media, or if they want to reach out to you. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't, you know what? I don't even know my little social media sites, but I would, uh, you can hit me up, uh, ladybird828 at yahoo.com. That's my email. Uh, L A D Y B Y R D. I don't know if I can I put it in the chat. I don't know. Oh wait, hold on. Um, Eric, can I chat? You, yeah. You, well, Eric, can you there put her email in the chat? Oh, I got it. Ladybird eight oh eight two eight at yahoo.com. I'm also on Facebook and um, Instagram, and just you know, look up Tracy Bird. I don't know what the little things yeah, are, you but can you'll find see me. Tracy as, Bird. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but uh, but that's my email. Just shoot me an email. Um, you know, love to chat with you and uh, talk boxing or whatever else you want to talk. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I guess that's, that's, we're going to end it all y'all. We're going to end it all. If nobody else has any more questions for Tracy, we're going to let her go. We've been, I've had her on here for two hours. She's probably like, what the <laughs> heck? No, she knew. Well, I figured as much. Yeah. Yeah. I figured as much. The questions, yeah. So she knew what we were going to be talking about. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate you so much for your time for coming on the show. Um, you're a, your story is phenomenal. It's so amazing. And I love doing these stories because I always learn something new about every fighter. I mean, I feel like I know yeah. most of the fighters um, and most of their backgrounds, but I love doing the research because you always find out something you didn't know. And then when you come on the show, there's still something else you didn't know. Right. Um, so it's so intriguing to me. It's so intriguing um, yeah. to learn so much more. Um, it's just history. It's really history. Yeah. Um, yes. So thank you so much. I can't wait to see you again in October. It'll be here before we know it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. All right. I appreciate you so much. You have a great night and uh, reach out anytime. You're welcome. Take care, All sis. Right. See you tomorrow. Bye, okay. All right, y'all. That is it. Tracy Bird was in the house. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, please share the episode. Please tell people about the show. Share it out. Let people know. Tell them to come support you guys are not going to be disappointed throughout the rest of all the interviews I got coming. There are so many amazing, amazing, amazing people coming. Thank you so much. Women's boxing channel. Have a great, great night. Thanks for coming um, and supporting. Um, but like I said, um, thanks for joining me again today on no punches pulled with no mercy with Tracy bird. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Please, please, please. I can't say it enough. Like subscribe, share, share, share. Um, spread the word. Let's get more people in here. People need to know these stories. Um, there is also a donut donate button below. If you would like to donate, it does go directly to me. It would be appreciated, but not necessary, of course. Um, but please also make sure you're following me as well as Tracy on all the social media platforms. I have two pages. Um, obviously my Brooke, no mercy, Deardorff hash Millbrook page, which is my boxing page, my own personal boxing page. And I also have a separate podcast page um, and a podcast group on Facebook as well. Um, no punches pulled with no mercy. Um, that's on all my social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram, 
Twitter, TikTok, all of them. Um, Facebook is the only one though that has a private um, no punches pulled with no mercy group. If you would like to join that, please feel free. Um, actually, it's not private, it's public. So you can join that and we just kind of just talk boxing in there. Um, but that way you can always be informed. I post on all of my pages, my boxing page and my podcast page ahead of time who's coming on the show next week. So you can always stay informed on who's coming on the show week to week before the show comes. Um, and I appreciate every single one of you for being here so, so, so much. Um, it means the world to me again. Um, I do try to put a lot into this um, to make it good shows and give you guys as much information as I can about these fighters. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for tuning in. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for being here. I've missed seeing you in the chat. I've missed seeing you in the chat. I appreciate you coming in. Um, thanks again for tuning in with me tonight. I will see you all again, same place, same time next Tuesday, of course, at 8 30 PM Eastern standard time with the next episode of No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. But until then, remember, punch hard because nothing else matters. Bye, guys. Have a great night.